Okay, so let's go ahead and get started creating the, the people icon, the people graphic. Now, really the secret to creating these is starting to just get familiar or learning to see the basic shapes that when combined, create that final shape. And since we're not really going, we're not going to illustrate or trace these graphics, we're actually just gonna combine uh, all some of the basic shapes in PowerPoint. Um, the, the really trick here is just kind of identifying and knowing what, what the shapes are, what, what shapes are available and how they can be creatively combined or arranged to create new shapes. And that's, that's kind of how we're, how we're bringing this together. So real quick, um, I did set this uh, quick access toolbar up a little bit. I customized it based on my most frequently used uh, tasks. And so like the align and then the shape tools and the, some of the combines that we'll get uh, into in a little bit. Um, these are all down here for me. If you want to customize this yourself, you can do that by uh, choosing the menu. You can show that uh, by default, you, you're used to seeing this up here with the save and the undo. Well, I just added some of these uh, different features to it. And you can do that by uh, just really right clicking anything and choosing add to quick access toolbar. And then I just move the toolbar uh, down below. So just makes it a little bit easier since this is kind of the, 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 the task that I'm performing most often. So I'm going to try to work from here as much as possible, but I'll try to also call out uh, where you can find those from the, the default ribbon. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to start by creating a new slide. And let's go ahead and create our head. Notice that when I hold the shift key down, uh, it constrains this to a perfect circle. So if you want to give your character uh, a little bit more of a melon head, you can do that. But uh, I'm going to hold the, the shift key down to get uh, that initial graphic uh, set up. Now, when, you, when I created this, you notice that there's a little outline around my shape, and that just happens by default in PowerPoint. But I'm going to turn that off, and just so I don't have to have to do that every time I insert a new shape, I'm going to right-click the shape and then just choose Set as Default Shape. And what that enables me to do is uh, each time I insert a new shape, a circle or any other shape, it's actually going to retain the properties, and that's like the color and the effects and uh, whether or not it has an outline things like that. So just, just a good time saver if you're gonna be uh, performing the same tasks over and over. All right, so I'll go ahead now and let's bring in the shoulders. And that is this one, which is the, if I hover over it, you'll see the caption, the round side, round same side corner rectangle. So uh, one side is rounded, the other side is flat. And that works for us. So let's drag that over. And if I want to increase the roundness of the shoulders, I can just drag that in a little bit and that should be okay. Let's see how I'm doing here on my canvas. Might be a little big. I'm going to bring that up a little and I'm going to zoom in. Another quick tip for zooming in and out is to press and hold your control key and then use the wheel, uh, the wheel button on your mouse and then you can scroll and zoom that way. It's pretty, pretty helpful. So shoulders in place, I'm going to go ahead now and insert an arm and we'll find that with the uh, rounded rectangle. If I zoom in here, you can see that I should round this up. It's not as, as round right here, but if I grab this little yellow square handle, drag it over, now I've got a perfect pill shape for the arms. And also the, uh, you can see how I start to I nudge this in place. You can see how the, the two objects align. I get those little guides that appear. That's real helpful for um, dragging this around. Now, I want to duplicate this, and a couple of different ways you can duplicate. Uh, one way that I really like is just to press and hold the control key and click and drag the object, and that'll create a, a duplicate of the object. Drag it over to the other side, and let's go ahead and bring in the torso, which is just a good old rectangle. Uh, let's see how it is. Might need to make the arms just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to shift click both of them. And as I drag them, it's going to obviously move this other one out. So I'll reposition it. And that's a little bit better. Going to duplicate the arm, one of the arms. So control click drag. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger for the leg. And there's a lot of ways that we can we can you know fiddle with this and get this a certain way, but I want to get the general idea down, and then we'll we'll continue. Um, if we need to make any adjustments, we can do that afterwards. But essentially, this is sort of how it's all coming together. 
at this point, that's pretty much it. Um, what I do want to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I want to make sure that my, see how my arm isn't quite aligned with that side. There we go. That should be okay. And I'm just going to check this real quick as well. And just to make sure his arms are the same length, I'm going to shift click the other to have both selected and I want to align to the bottom. Okay. And then finally, what I should have done, and I'm going to do it right now, shift click the head, shift click the torso and the shoulders. I want to make sure those are all perfectly uh, centered. So if I align the object to the center, it looks like they're good. And for the most part, there's, there's our character. Move the leg over. Right now he's got shorts. Now he's got an apron or a cape something. So somewhere around there is fine. And if I needed to make the legs a little bit bigger, I could do that too. But I think that's pretty good overall. In the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and combine these into a single shape so that uh, our character is just one graphic object. And then we'll go into the third tutorial where we'll actually create uh, the masking effect.